the Boreal Forest stretches right across Canada, from, from Newfoundland right across up to Alaska and extends into Alaska in the United States. It is the largest ecosystem in the country. Depending on the province that you're in, 60 to 80 percent of, of those provinces are made up of boreal forest. They're just an incredible system that has a tremendous amount of biodiversity, a lot of our water in this country is here, and uh, has the largest amount of wetlands that we have in this country. They're found in the boreal forest. Boreal forest provides an amazing amount of ecological goods and services, recreation, habitat. There's more wildlife than we can count in the boreal forest and uh, an amazing array of plants and soils and just an incredible place. We are very interested as Ducks Unlimited because the wildlife component that's, that wetlands provide. But, you know, it's very important to uh, recognize the other values that these wetlands provide society. We know from past work that wetlands store enormous amounts of carbon because of the large amounts of peat that are stored in, in the wetland under the ground. So we want to take every opportunity we have of both increasing the amount of carbon that's absorbed by ecosystems, but also maintaining the carbon that's already in ecosystems to make sure that it's not added to the atmosphere, because we don't want any more of that. Well, this project, which is looking at measuring the carbon that's stored in various types of wetlands in the boreal forest, it's a way for us to document the actual carbon store values of these wetlands. Well, the project that we're involved with here is funded by the Sustainable Forestry Initiative and uh, the funding went to the Saskatchewan Research Council and we're a partner in this project along with Louisiana Pacific who has been a long-standing partner of Ducks Unlimited looking at sustainable solutions for forestry around wetlands conservation. Whenever the forestry companies are doing something in the uplands there is a fairly high likelihood that those activities will affect the wetlands it's because they're intimately related you know, geographically. If the uh, activities that the forestry companies are undertaking somehow negatively affect the carbon in the wetlands, then we get the carbon released into the atmosphere, and of course we don't want that. Part of what the forest industry does to make forest products is we have to build a road to access a harvest block where we harvest timber. We want our operations to be carbon neutral. We don't want to have an effect or, or release a whole bunch of carbon. And so what we're trying to avoid is blocking the flow of water that's through the wetland. So we want to know what the wetland is, know what the hydrologic flow, cross it in a wise fashion and have no, no impact and keep that carbon exactly where it is. The main goal of this project is to develop a protocol or a methodology for assessing carbon in wetlands, uh, primarily forested in wetlands. And what we're trying to do specifically is strike a balance between uh, credible scientific estimates of carbon stored in wetlands, while at the same time developing a methodology that can actually be implemented by people in the field in the real world. We sample the depth on eight plots on, on times two transects and we do two peat samples with a Russian peat borer. It goes to the University of Brandon, one of our newer partners. The lab at Brandon determines the carbon content of the peat. That information is then combined with information on depth and area of wetlands to generate estimates of the total amount of carbon stored in the wetlands. Um, we'll then integrate the wetland carbon data with the upland carbon data that we already have for LP and we'll wind up with a landscape scale analysis um, or estimate of carbon uh, across LP's entire land base. When Mark gets those numbers for across the landscape, I'm going to plug them into Louisiana Pacific's 20-year forest management plan. Are we maintaining that amount of carbon? Is it going up? Is it going down? And if it is, what management actions do we need to take? We're interested in sustainability, not just of the trees, but also the carbon and the wetlands. And uh, we want to take full advantage and, and utilize this knowledge and information for, for sustainability. The approach, the methodology, the handbook, all of those products will be freely available and will, should be able to be used for pretty much any forest company that's operating in the boreal in Canada. Duck's role has been one of the most critical because 
They have, over the last uh, couple of decades now, done an incredible job of mapping wetlands all across Canada. And so we're using the mapping tools that they've developed and the wetland classification to divide up Louisiana Pacific's landscape in a way that allows us to sample across all of those different wetland types. We want good management of the forest. We're interested in sustainability and so is Ducks Unlimited. With wetlands being incorporated into the Sustainable Forestry Initiative certification standard, companies that are certified to that standard must demonstrate how they're conserving wetlands on their land base. That's one of the reasons why Louisiana Pacific is interested, is that they're able to demonstrate that they're meeting that standard in terms of wetlands conservation by working with this research group in Ducks Unlimited Canada. We're recognizing more and more that these are really important uh, ecosystems for storing carbon and contributing to climate regulation.